Let's look in on America's perfect family, the Joneses. I just look at their amazing life. Safe, secure jobs, social respect and admiration, a growing family, home ownership, new model cars, and a gourmet kitchen. Yes, the Joneses are living proof that if we're willing to follow the same trusted path... What the f... I live in America, the land of the free. But am I really free at all? Working and slaving 50, 60 hours a week just to trade it all away for monthly living expenses to fulfill this American dream. The American dream. <laughs> what is that? Who built this system of norms that I have to follow in order to feel free? Call it dependence. Call it addiction. Call it whatever you want. The world around me is pushing for faster, bigger, newer, complicated, and convenient surroundings, while all I want is a smaller, slower, simpler, self-sufficient, real life. I've always had a constant desire to be on the move and rely on no one for my survival, the exact opposite of costly apartment life. I've wanted to be in control of my life and my circumstances. I see all these half-million-dollar homes that tie us down to a parcel of crowded side-by-side -side matching homes. A homeowner? Not me. Why let a bank own me for life? Ownership is misunderstood in this country. Swiping a credit card to pay for my new pool is not ownership. You don't own anything. Seems just years ago I felt so free owning a cell phone. And now it's just another leash and tether with a monthly bill. So I sought out an alternate path, one I could construct based on my own needs. I disagreed with so much of what was viewed by others as normal. Why do I have to get married, have 2.5 kids, buy a home, buy two cars, mortgage the house, buy new granite countertops because they don't match the brand new appliances, lock myself up in credit card debt for the rest of my life? I know I was born to be a nomad and live simpler. It was in my blood all along. It just took me years to break free of society's hold on me. My ego got in the way so often. I felt that I wouldn't be able to present my lifestyle to my peers. And then, I took the plunge. I bought a motorhome. I sold all of my furniture and every possession that I wouldn't be able to use on the road. I loaded up my RV and went on the road full time, determined to keep my cost of living low and meet like-minded nomads on this new journey finally underway. Follow me as I make my own dream on the road. Walmarts. They're all over the country, and many allow overnight parking to RVs passing through from town to town. So far, my routine is just the same as in my old apartment. Jax wakes me up just as the sun begins to creep in. He's hungry, and he won't wait any longer. I tap into some free Wi-Fi internet from the coffee shop across the street and check my email, get a weather report, and see that the Mariners dropped another game late last night. My RV is equipped with many propane appliances that will keep me self-contained no matter where I'm parked. My fridge, freezer, furnace, hot water heater, stove, and oven all run on propane. I have running water from a 40-gallon onboard tank pressurized by a built-in water pump so showering, washing dishes, and brushing my teeth are not any different than in any home. My toilet operates just the same as any standard toilet and has its own 35-gallon holding tank. So far in this RV experience, I can't even tell a difference. Except that today I'm driving my entire home with me to Bellingham to sit down with an internet van dweller I met on YouTube. Chris has been living in a van, traveling all across the country. 
sometimes settling down for a few weeks to earn some money bartending for gas to get to his next destination. My name's Chris. Right now I'm living in my camper van. It's 1990 Dodge Explorer. When I did my, my internship, my college internship, I was doing really well, making 20 bucks an hour as an intern. But the 9 to 5, going to work every day was, I honestly, that's, I can, I can look back and say that was 100% the worst time of my life. Like, I was, I was, you know, doing, doing really well for myself, had the apartment, paying the rent, doing all the bills and everything, and that was just for a summer. And that, that first two weeks in, I knew that wasn't the, the, the life for me. So I was kind of thankful for, for that experience to be able to witness it and be able to, you know, kind of be steered away from it. I've actually had a decent amount of friends come meet me on the road and we do a little mini road trip together. Basically, when I was in college, I had a big plan of buying uh, just a van and traveling around with my Husky. And uh, everybody knew about it because I was telling everybody how excited it was. So all my really good friends and family, they, they knew that I was wanting to do something like this for years and years. So once I did get a Class B with, you know, the fridge, toilet, microwave, all that, it was just kind of a natural progression. I do do a lot of fishing. I have, what is that? There's four poles up here. I've got my fly rod down there, tackle boxes up top. Um, anywhere where I can fish, especially in Alaska, it's the best fishing you'll ever have in your entire life. These bad boys are out every day I'm off work. Uh, trying to catch those salmon and halibut, it, it's opened up pretty much the, the entire world. Like I'm free to do whatever I want, when I want. But I think people are be, becoming more open to this lifestyle compared to the people that are more close-minded to it. I think there's starting to be a little bit of a shift. Urban camping is very popular to many boondockers. The convenience of stores and supplies nearby can create a desirable environment. But I knew this scenery would get old quick and I was excited to get away into a more primitive, off-grid, natural setting. No Wi-Fi, no cell phone service, no power hookups, just a gravel parking spot, a picnic table, a fire pit, and riverfront property. Free camping courtesy of the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. Now this is freedom. Many weekend warrior RVers bring their family dog along for the ride. Living with a cat in a small space is tricky, but he's my best friend and co-pilot. He's a 22-pound Maine Coon ragdoll tabby with extra toes, leash trained, and never gets tired of playing fetch. He's basically a dog stuck in a cat's body. Speaking of pets in small places, I met Dale from my alternative dwelling internet post. He lives in a very small boat in a Seattle marina, so we decide to stop by and catch up with him on our way back down south. Hello, my name is Dale. This is a 20-foot Vivacity um, sailboat. That's my home. Um, come on in. This is Sugar. Um, a friend left Turner and I'm babysitting her. Um, she's been a wonderful friend. Dale's sleeping arrangements look more crowded than I expected, but it helps to prove how people can adapt to any lifestyle. I am fortunate I live like 30 feet from the bathroom, laundry, and shower facility. And normally when I get off work, I come in and just strip down pretty much into my swimsuit and go take a shower and then come back all hot and warm. One of the things that I have that is kind of scary, but if it's done right, I've got a heat lamp, a brooder heat lamp, and that produces enough light to read by and stuff, and it makes it 
even if I've got the temperature down like 55 or 60, that makes it comfortably up and about. Being plugged into shore power is a big part of Dale's life. These creature comforts are not available when he leaves dock for the sea. I began to wonder how I could be less energy dependent myself while on the road. The sun begins to set. I get back in my RV and remember that in order to keep my lights on, I have to keep my batteries charged, and I only have one way to charge them. A fuel hungry generator. So I published an online funding campaign for portable solar power in my RV and asked for the public's help for contributions. Hey there everybody, my name's Eric. This is Jax, my cat. And we are full-time RVers here in the Pacific Northwest. We live in a 1983 Ford Fleetwood Tioga. It's a 24-foot Class C motorhome. The campaign lasted 45 days and was viewed by more than half a million people worldwide. Over $3,000 were raised through 92 different contributors. I found the portable system that matched our needs and installed it myself. Being portable and able to be 16 feet away from the RV battery meant that I could maneuver it around the shady areas of Northwest campgrounds. Once hooked up, simply sit back and enjoy virtually unlimited power being harnessed by the natural light of the sun. The fundraising campaign was such a success due to the large following I acquired on YouTube. My channel, Nomadic Fanatic, aired one month into my RV adventure, and I intended it to be a how-to informational place for other campers and RVers to understand specific RV tricks and tips on a cheaper budget. I did tutorials on how to operate the fridge and oven, the thermostat, and how to empty the holding tanks, how to fire up the fridge, oven, and stove on propane how to wash clothes in a portable washing machine that I travel with, how to swap propane tanks for maximum time away from filling stations. I reviewed free products sent from Amazon to hundreds of thousands of subscribers and made a small profit after becoming an Amazon partner with my own referral links to popular RV products. The channel now has a life of its own, over 6,000 subscribers and nearly 1 million total views. It's now more of a daily vlog, and I won't lie, Jax is a star, and the majority of viewers tune in for him. But it's been a great way to connect with strangers across the world, and it led me to all of the interesting people I've met on the road. Being in an RV has meant a lot of changes to how I consume power. Up until the time where I got solar panels, my radio-controlled car hobby had sat dormant in the closet as I was unable to charge the batteries. But now, with solar panels and power being produced every day, I figure I can probably run my car non-stop all day with an extra battery always charging. Okay, I am a sucker for toys, but not all of my activities require power. I do like to stay fit on my bike, and sometimes I bring out the guitar. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the life. There were plants and birds and rocks and things. There were sand and hills and rains. The first thing I met was a fly with a buzz and a sky with no clouds. The heat was hot. And the ground was dry, but the air was full of sound. I've been through the desert on a horse with no name and bell. Ever since buying my RV, I've had little use for my car. But today, I decide to leave the RV behind and travel south to Oregon to find out what all the hype is about with these tiny houses. I left Jax in charge of the RV and security. Caravan, the tiny house hotel. These four separate alternative dwellings were built on trailer frames and are completely mobile. Therefore, the owners can rent them out within city limits without paying the taxes associated with motel rentals. Power, Wi-Fi, heat, AC, cable TV. I wouldn't call it roughing it exactly here in these tiny houses. 
fridge, freezer, hot plate, microwave, hot running water, flushing toilet and full size shower. I believe it's very possible to live like this full time, except no cats allowed in these rentals. And one night away from Jack's really made me homesick. I reunited with him the following day in my RV, but we had to hit the road bright and early to catch Chad, another van dweller here in Washington State. My name's Chad. I live in a 1991 Volkswagen Westfalia. The way that the van works for me is it enables me to live a simpler lifestyle, uh, not have so many bills, um, and be able to take off on those road trips that I need to to be able to grab the photography and do the filmmaking and stuff like that. So it enables me to do what I do for a living. You know, I've been up one side and down the other of the American dream. You know, I was married when I was 21, and I've had the house, I've had the car payments, I've had all that stuff. Um, I worked the same career for the last 18 years of my life um, and that was in the construction equipment rental business and I'm a creative person I knew I wanted to be doing something different once I finally was able to wake up and realize that the typical American lifestyle is not the way I want to live I went the other direction and I've been happier living in my Volkswagen van than I ever have with the big house or the big apartment downtown or all the toys or the big truck and all the payments like I spent a lot of money trying to make myself happy but actually now that I don't have very much money and I live in a van I'm the most happiest. If I'm forced to follow these strict set of guidelines how can I say I'm free? Talking with all these nomads on the road makes me feel less alone about my ideas and lifestyle choices. Plenty of people think outside of this dream stereotype. Maybe there are people out there who are completely happy with the cookie cutter American dream. I know where I am today. I have no idea where I'll be tomorrow. I am perfectly happy on the road. Every morning I wake up and get to see something new.